ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the container corporation of india limited q2 fy25 earnings conference call hosted by dam capital advisors limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital Advisors Limited. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to the Q2 FY25 earnings call of Container Corporation of India. Uh, we have the management today being represented by Mr. Sanjay Swaroop, Chairman and Managing Director of Concord. Um, I'll now hand over the floor to him for his initial remarks. Post which we'll open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, on behalf of Concord family, uh, I would like to extend the Diwali greetings to all of you. In the uh, conference call, I am joined by Mr. Mohammad Azhar Shams, Director Domestic, Mr. Priyaranjan Padi, Director International Marketing and Operations, uh, Mr. Uh, Uh, Ajit Kumar Panda, Director Projects and Services; Mr. Anurag Kapil, Director Finance; and Mr. Uh, Harish Chandra, ED Finance and Company Secretary of Concord. I will like to give you some uh, highlights, and after that, uh, we can start the question and answer session. Uh, I am happy to announce the growth in throughput of six percent for the uh, half uh, first half of this financial year. it includes exim growth of 3.5% and domestic growth of 14.5% uh, exim growth is uh, quite in line with the india's uh, international trade uh, in exports uh, for the first half uh, the international trade of india was uh, total 213.22 billion usd which is a growth of 1% uh, over corresponding period of last financial year import of uh, total uh, of our country was 350.66 billion us dollars which is a growth of 6% over uh, last financial year one more uh, point that i would like to uh, present is that we had uh, increase in exim market share for this first half uh, in pan india basis exim uh, market share grew by 91 basis points at mundra port our exim market share grew by 248 basis points and pipawa port our market share grew by 285 basis points the good thing is that uh, there is a growth in market share as well as there is a growth in margins also so without sacrificing margins we have grown our market share uh, rail freight margin grew by 80 basis points year on year operating margin ex- ex- excluding uh, exceptional items grew by 95 basis points year on year the primary reasons for this uh, performance is the customer centricity and operational excellence of team concord operating income growth was 6.58% uh, growth in uh, profit after tax was 4.08% for the company and uh, the double stack rates also saw a good growth of 11.5% in this first half we had 3083 uh, double stack frames as compared to 2766 last year we have added infrastructure also to give service to our customers in this first half we have commissioned two high speed rails and uh, we hope that in the second half we will be commissioning 10 more rails so for this uh, financial year around 12 high speed rails will be commissioned by us so now our total count of uh, rates stands at 380 we have procured 5130 new containers in this first half so total count stands at now 49516 containers which are owned by concord we are continuously adding more and more containers of tank containers then maybe for 40 fit types also we are going now for uh, in first time may for our domestic customers We had in March a capex budget of rupees 610 crores for this financial year. 
In the first half, we have already achieved Rs. 276.16 crore and uh, we may be looking at the CapEx budget very soon, whether we want to upgrade it, uh, seeing the infrastructure requirements of the company. Uh, international, as you all know, because of the challenging geopolitical scenario, international supply chains are adversely affected. This has resulted in uh, erratic vessel schedules. There is a congestion at transshipment ports, and there is less availability of slots in vessels for exports. These are the challenging situations being faced by exim trade of our country. Uh, domestic loading was also affected in the second quarter, primarily because we had very good rainfall in North India and Gujarat, which affected our domestic loading. But I'm happy to announce that from this month, it has picked up very nicely, and we are getting very good growth in domestic in Q3. <laughs> Despite all these challenges, uh, the exports uh, increased for some commodities. There was handsome increase, like for ready-made garments, there was 41% growth, paper products, 31% growth, food items, 28% growth. Similarly, imports also, in solar modules, it was 126% growth, wood pulp, it was 20% growth. And I am happy to inform all of you that uh, Concord commenced rail services between Kandla port and interland ICDs of North India. This is a new port where we have uh, started the rail services. And uh, we have posted ever highest PAT of Rs. 371 crores in Q2. This is the highest for any quarter in the history of Concord. And this is despite the exceptional items of uh, Rs. 25 crores net of tax that uh, one of the Vivaad Vishwas scheme uh, claimed that we settled as per the directives of uh, Government of India. If we add this 25 crore, then the PAT will further increase. So as such, uh, 317 crore, 371 crore is a, uh, a record for our, for our company, a record PAT in any quarter. We had the uh, highest operating turnover, highest total turnover in any first half year. <coughs> and highest PAT also in any first half, despite, uh, apart from the highest PAT in a quarter also. And uh, uh, the board of directors has uh, declared a dividend of uh, rupees uh, 3.25 per share, which is 65% of par value. So till now we have uh, declared a dividend of 105% for the first half of this financial year, which uh, is around uh, total outgo of rupees 322 crores for our uh, shareholders. Focus area of the company remain total logistic solution to customers, business solution, including warehousing and FMLA, and providing green and sustainable logistics to our customers. Uh, at this point, I would like to maintain the guidance that I gave at the start of financial year, that is for exam 15%, domestic 25%, and total 18%. Of course, in Exim, it will be a bit challenging, but I am quite confident that uh, we will be able to achieve this. The new initiative, growth drivers for achieving this guidance uh, will be some three, four growth drivers we have identified. First will be the bringing JNPT Navasheva on double step, that is through Vannama. By November end, I am confident that we will be able to start this service. Uh, wherein we will give benefit of double stacking to uh, North India customers uh, for Nama Sheva traffic. And I, I expect that there will be diversion of business from road to rail. So this will be a big uh, gain for the company. Second will be the bulk payment in time containers. I had a meeting recently with CMD of Messrs. Bracewet Corporation, which is a sister PSU of uh, Concord under Ministry of Railways. And he has assured me that by December, he will start giving us tank containers, which will be utilized for uh, bulk cement movement. We are in touch with leading cement manufacturers. They are quite uh, excited about it. And we hope to garner very good business in domestic in the coming months. Then we have a uh, very good demand for rice exports now, and especially of our, at our ICDs at Nagpur, Raipur, Sonipat, etc. And we hope that in the coming months, uh, already actually rice exports have started, 
after diwali the traction is going to pick up so we will have we will have very good right rice exports in the coming months all these uh, things will add to our top line as well as bottom line we are also we have signed and we are still signing uh, agreements of volume dis- volume based discounts with shipping lines long term agreements 3 to 5 years this will further uh, cement our uh, relationship with them and increase our business so besides that uh, we will get business at new terminals that we are commissioned and we will have more focus on dpt direct port delivery movements so all these five six growth drivers will further enhance our business and we are quite confident that we will end up uh, achieving the guidance that i gave at the at the start of the financial year this is all uh, opening statement from my side now you can start with questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are you requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of amit dekshar from icici please go ahead yeah hi good morning everyone thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a great performance uh, in spite of all odds uh, i have couple of questions sir the first one is on the llf so while we saw some kind of reversal of around 40 crores in this uh, quarter uh, just wanted to understand the broad contours of it that how do we see this llf panning out for rest of the year and uh, what kind of uh, llf provisions we should take in our uh, in our own models and secondly uh, why this 40 crores provision right back what exactly is happening over there uh, uh, okay uh, thank you amit uh, as far as llf is concerned this uh, 40 crore actually provision we had made at the icd by three but now that uh, the uh, land rates are settled with railway so we have uh, set off in this uh, in this quarter so uh, llf is uh, settled with the indian railway now there is uh, no further issue and we are uh, constantly as i uh, mentioned in my earlier uh, conference calls also we are constantly uh, evaluating our terminals that uh, we, wherever we uh, come up with new logistic parts uh, we surrender the railway terminals uh, so there is to as a saving on uh, llf without sacrificing our business so same policy will continue as far as the payment of llf is concerned it is more or less settled with railways so we need not uh, worry on that front uh, any guidance you would uh, like to provide for fi 25 sir on llf uh, that will be in the range of 350 to 400 crores not more than that yeah. oh Okay. The second question is on domestic business. So, exam while it has performed pretty well, domestic also what I see that it has bounced off compared to last quarter. But if I compare on Y Y basis, while our revenue has gone up, EBIT has uh, fallen. So, uh, just wanted to understand whether it is due to uh, the rail to the road uh, competition from road uh, guys or uh, whether it is due to more empty running or uh, I mean, just wanted to get a more little bit more clarity on this. the uh, domestic business has uh, performed quite well of course uh, not as expected but uh, if you see year on year for first half uh, there is a growth of uh, 14.5% in handling in domestic and uh, 22% growth in uh, originating we use uh, in number of containers uh, of course uh, it it could have been better but because of as i mentioned in my opening address uh, very good rainfall that we had this year in north india as well as gujarat because gujarat and north india are the major originating points for domestic loading so there was disruption because of rains and we could not get that much loading but from this month uh, october uh, we are getting very good loading in domestic and uh, we are quite satisfied with it so you will see uh, in subsequent weeks uh, domestic will be doing extremely well Uh, so the more specific question was essentially that you know revenue has remained flat by or by while ebit has fallen so just wanted to understand whether there was some one off cost item or something that uh, was in this quarter that would not recur 
I will like, uh, I request my director domestic to throw more light on this. I think in this respect, whatever you have been underlining, it might take it like, you know, that uh, for the last, uh, I mean, uh, three to four months, or you may start, uh, say that from the start of this financial, we have been losing a bit of market share in the domestic. Because the competitors on the PPPOs have been really very aggressive, and I have been giving very, very aggressive rate, and we were losing the business. In order to arrest that trend, we took a conscious call to let us first regain the volume, even at the cost of, you know, some uh, reduction in revenue and profitability. And subsequently, we will see to what to do. So now I think that result we have started getting from this month only. And we have tweaked our rate, for, rate positively also in some extreme. So I think whatever negative trend, you see that our volume has increased. But the revenue has been flat, but from this month and whatever corrective action we took, now the customers are with us and they are ready to accept, uh, you know, a bit of rate increase because, because of our services. So I think the positive result in revenue, you will see from uh, I mean, uh, third quarter onward, and October is certainly showing very good uh, green shoots on that. Very clear, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Bhumika Nayak from Dam Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yes, sir. First, can you please share the uh, originating volumes for this quarter? Yeah, I will tell you. Originating volume of uh, this quarter is uh, Exim. It is. Uh, Five, uh, five, seven, five, seven, six. Domestic one double three two double five TUs. Total is uh, six nine zero eight three one TUs. Okay, okay. So, sir, I mean, um, you know, how are you seeing the trajectory now in October? You know, there was this whole uh, Red Sea and shipping disruption, etc., which had led to. Um, you know, heavy volumes kind of moving away from rail. How is that now kind of panning out in the month of October or off late? See, uh, October month, as I told you, uh, we have got very good traction in domestic. Domestic, we are seeing very good uh, loading uh, across the country. As far as exim is concerned, uh, imports are uh, a bit muted. They're not, uh, growth is there, but not that much. But from the last one week to 10 days, uh, we are seeing a good demand of rice exports. And we have got firm indication, we are in touch with the trade, that uh, after Diwali, rice exports is coming in a big way. And uh, imports are also going to increase. Because uh, of the Red Sea disruption, there was, as I told you initially, erratic uh, vessel schedules. Vessel schedules have, are erratic. They cannot be very, very predictable. So because of that, it was a temporary, uh, you, you can say, dip uh, in the month of October for the last, uh, for the first 15, 20 days. But now it is going to pick up. Okay, okay. So can we also get the empty running charges for Exim domestic and also the distances for this uh, quarter? Uh, I have for half a year. Yes. Uh, for Exim, it is uh, uh, 63.47 crores. Domestic, it is 140.89 crores. Total is 204.36 crores. And the uh, lead distances, sir? Lead distances for uh, Exim, uh, for domestic, it is uh, 1318 kilometers. Exim, it is 705 kilometers. Total is 803 kilometers. Sir, I mean, I'm sorry, just to circle back on this volume aspect, I know you guided for, you know, 15% in exim, but if you look at the first half, it's about uh, sub 4% kind of a growth. So, you know, it will mean that in the second half, we'll have to see that trajectory moving to 20-25%. Um, that's the kind of momentum that we're seeing as of now. Yeah, as of now, we, uh, frankly speaking, uh, that momentum we are uh, visualizing because uh, there is a very good uh, projection given by trade 
and we are of course i find it challenging as i told my tv interviews also in the morning of course we find it challenging but we are quite confident based on the various sectors like uh, rice exports and double stacking to jnpt so uh, these things are very very crucial for trade and uh, they are well publicized trade is very much aware and uh, so we are quite confident that we will be able to get this target <laughs> okay okay great sir i'll move uh, to uh, come back in the question queue thank you so much thank you very much the next question is from the line of alok devra from motilal please go ahead uh hello sir uh, congratulations on good numbers uh, sir just to wanted to understand this llf uh, there is 40 crore uh, reversal so and you mentioned about 350 crore sort of a guidance for this year so we are expecting some further reversal also in coming quarters uh, because the quarter the unit i believe was around 100 crore per quarter So I told you. I told. I told 350 to 400. Got it. Right. Okay. So it 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 will be near 400 only. Near 400. Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then for next year it would be around seven percent higher types kind of number. Yeah, you are well aware. The formula is that every year it should increase by seven percent. But at the same time, as I mentioned initially, that we are constantly evaluating that wherever we uh, set up new logistic paths. and uh, that logistic path is able to serve the interland for a particular uh, terminal then we uh, move uh, our business to logistic park and uh, close that terminal surrender it to railways so that exercise will continue maybe next year uh, we are able to commission some logistic park and surrender some land so then it will have a saving of uh, lls got it And sir, uh, on this guidance point again, I mean, you have maintained the guidance, but you know, it's pretty challenging environment as uh, you know, the industries uh, indicators are pointing out to be. So in that scenario, such a kind of growth in second half, uh, as you yourself mentioned, is challenging. So what's the bare minimum growth you could actually achieve if things did not pan out the way we are expecting? Uh, bare minimum growth in the exam side. See, uh, uh, normally from first October we say that busy season has started in railways language. Yes. So busy season has already started. Busy season means more business. So I am quite optimistic that we will be able to achieve the guidance uh, that I gave in the start of the financial year. And uh, there are various pointers, and there are various uh, you know uh, pointers that I am getting by interaction with trade. So this is uh, that is why I am feeling very confident to achieve this uh, guidance. So uh, I will uh, uh, I will like to adhere to it, and uh, um, I'm quite confident that we will be able to achieve this guidance. I will not I like to speculate on any other number. Got it, sir. Got it. Uh, all right, sir. Uh, that's all for my side. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Dishi Giriya from Ashika. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, so while you are maintaining the guidance level, could you help us quantify what are the initiatives that you uh, think would be uh, contributing to this growth? I mean, the growth number is exorbitant, like the other participants had also mentioned. but uh, could you help us quantify some numbers for it see uh, uh, i already told the growth drivers five six growth drivers in my opening uh, remarks now which growth driver will give me how much number that uh, i am not able to tell you right now maybe uh, separately one to one basis we can discuss and i can tell you right uh so my second question is regarding this vivarti vishwas uh the contractual uh expense that we had this quarter so could we just explain what was this for actually uh, this was a uh, dispute between contractor and uh, concord uh, in which uh, the vivarti vishwas scheme is uh, given by government of india that uh, if uh, arbitration award goes against uh, the company then this is a medium through which uh, uh, some 65% of that award uh, we can offer to the 
uh, opposite party and if they agree if they accept it then we settle it and all the future court cases are avoided there is no court case after that by the party so it was uh, some such uh, dispute in some contract in which the arbitration award went against the company and uh, we uh, this uh, contractor uh, went for the vasya vishwas uh, scheme and we also worked out how much money is payable and then 65% of that we offered as per the scheme to the contractor and he accepted it so we had to settle it and we made the payment and net of tax it was rupees 25 crores which hit we had to take in this quarter all right understood thank you so much sir thank you very much participants to ask a question you may press star and one the next question is from the line of priyanka vishwas from bnp please go ahead uh good morning sir uh, so this is priyanka vishwas from bnp uh, so my first question is uh, uh, so what i understand now is that the western dfc connection to jnpt is not happening before december 2025 so earlier it was march 2025 so in such a case how would we be able to secure a let's say after double digit growth in exiting volumes in uh, fy25 again let's say a double digit growth in fy26 because what we are witnessing is a very steady erosion in rail model share in jnpt so if you can address this point yeah it's a good question uh, you rightly mentioned that uh, western dfc connection to jnpt will be in uh, december 2025 as per the indications given by dfp officials but uh, we are going to give benefit of uh, double stacking to our customers for jnpt we have it we have set up a terminal at a place called varnama near baroda which is 400 kilometers from jnpt so for north india customers we will be running double stack train up to varnama because it's a unique terminal which is connected to indian railway and as well as dfc dfc connectivity is under progress last week i have visited varnama i have inspected the site and work is going on in full swing of course it was affected because of the rains but now uh, work is going on at full speed and we are confident that by end of before end of november the work will be commissioned and this terminal will be connected to dfc so it will be having connection to dfc as well as railways so we will run Uh, double stack train from Zadri and Katwa up to Varnama. Double stack train on DFC, and uh, from Varnama we will uh, break it into two single stack trains, and they will go on Indian Railways route route up to JNPT for the last 400 kilometers. So and a reverse will happen for imports. So in this manner uh, we will be able to uh, have some predictability for our customers. predictable time at jnpt and secondly we will pass on some cost benefits for the container which are moving on upper deck so uh, we are confident that uh, we will be able to shift lot of cargo from road to rail as as a result of this exercise so that is the uh, benefit that i made in the uh, that is the one of the growth drivers that i mentioned in my opening remarks and uh, we are quite confident to achieve this Uh, sir, just uh, uh, harking again on this, uh, uh, any particular reason why in JNPT the rail coefficient is uh, falling, and why uh, and what is the coefficient right now? Because we have been seeing this trend for some time now. Uh, what may be the reason for it? See, JNPT rail coefficient at present is around sixteen uh, percent, in which the concourse share is fifty-eight uh, percent for the first half of this financial year. Uh, the main reason is that lot of cargo has uh, uh, for north india lot of cargo has shifted to uh, mundra port uh, which is uh, giving a benefit of double stacks and secondly distance to north india is also less from mundra port to north india uh, so and jnpt is now serving uh, the interland around jnpt uh, for which uh, the road becomes uh, faster and economical and jnpt is also serving uh, the area of uh, nagpur uh, hyderabad and uh, even we have started for bangalore also 
one movement we uh, one movement we are doing for Vishakhapatnam also from JNPT. So all these places JNPT is serving by rail, but uh, primarily it is serving uh, short uh, distance traffic, which is more viable by road. So that is uh, the most probable reason of decline in uh, rail coefficient. But with the commissioning of DFC, we hope that uh, rail coefficient at JNPT will rise. Thank you, sir. That's very clear. And just one question I'm just squeezing in. So I think in 2Q, you, the railway does not levy a busy season surcharge. But from 3Q onwards, they again start doing it. I think it's 10%. Uh, so would that be impacting our margins on a sequential basis, at least on exam, if you can take that? The uh, railway railway is uh, levying busy season surcharge throughout the year now. So they have not uh, done any relaxation for q but uh, there is no cause of worry because uh, whatever uh, tariff increase that we had from uh, November of uh, last uh, year, that we are continuing. We have not revised our rates. So uh, there will not be any effect on margins. Thank you, sir. That was all from me, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is on the line of Mukesh Sara from Avender Spa. Please go ahead. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir, good morning and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the question is around uh, exam growth. So if I look at your origination, it's uh, grown around 3% uh, this quarter. Uh, when I look at, uh, say, the port volume growth uh, at some of the major ports, uh, obviously, JNP has grown at uh, more than 15%, Mundra at 12% uh, in the second quarter. So just trying to understand uh, this uh, gap is widening between our origination growth and the port. Well, in uh, JNPK, obviously, you had mentioned that rail coefficients have been falling. Uh, but in Mundra, what we understand is rail coefficients have been going up as well. So, could you kind of uh, throw some light on uh, the gap between the growth numbers uh, for us and at the port level, uh, especially Mundra kind of ports? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, at Mundra port, uh, the rail coefficient has uh, come down, but our uh, market share has increased. I will give you the numbers. Uh, for the first half of financial year, in Mundra port, uh, last year rail coefficient was 25.79%. It has become now 23.82%. So there is a downward trend as far as rail coefficient is concerned. But our uh, market share is, was 36.35%, which has now become 38.83%. Like I told in the opening uh, yeah. remarks, that our market share has grown by 248 basis points at Mundra port. As far as the power port is concerned, there is a drastic fall in rail coefficient. Uh, last year, uh, it was 64.55%, and this year, the rail coefficient is 57.42%, whereas our market share has increased from 45.04% to 47.89%, which is a growth of 285 basis points. And all this we have achieved without sacrificing our margins. That is the beauty of it. So our margins are intact. Margins have in, in fact increased. And we have increased our market share as well as increased our margins. So that is a testimony of the relationship, excellent relationship that we have with our customers and the operational excellence shown by our team concourse. Um, great, so but, but if you could also uh, give the same numbers for some of the other major ports like uh, Chennai, uh, which uh, I, I don't have I don't have numbers for uh, other ports, but I have for okay. DCPT, Mumbai and Pipawa, which I have already shared. Sure, sure, thank you. And uh, my second question is, uh, I think you were mentioning in you know, opening the market and in the last quarter as well that we're getting into these long-term contracts with uh, shipping lines, uh, maybe three to five year kind of contracts. Uh, well, we don't want the, uh, the details in terms of the commercials, but uh, could you throw some light on pricing, etc., how these would work? Uh, because these are volume-based contracts, and uh, uh, would you have to kind of, uh, uh, you know, bid at attractive prices uh, to get those higher volumes? Uh, how does it work? Yeah, it's a, a very good question. Uh, actually, what we are doing is uh, we are having long-term relationship with shipping lines, and big shipping lines, we are... Uh, big as well as small, it is for all. Uh, actually, as you may be knowing, since last one or two years, the focus of the company is uh, on providing total logistics solution to our customers. This is one of the focus area of the company. So we have uh, 4 million square feet of warehousing spaces, 
at our six to six terminals across the country. We are building more warehouses. Apart from that, we have become quite strong in FMLM also. First mile, last mile. Sure. Uh, we sure. are having uh, 130 LNG trucks for FMLM and 200 more we are procuring. One more news I wanted to share with all of you. The first LNG pump in North India of our country is going to be commissioned this month only, oh, sorry, next month in November, mid-November, at, at our MMLT Katwas. So because in North India we are constrained, we cannot deploy LNG trucks because there is no LNG pump, fuel pump. Mm -hmm. So that is being commissioned by IOC in our terminal at Katwas. So uh, we have uh, we have uh, had a series of meetings with uh, shipping lines at Mumbai as well as UBC, and we offered our warehouses. We offered our first mile, last mile, and we offer uh, volume based incentives. So all these things uh, uh, we gave them as a package that uh, you use our services, and in turn it will be win win situation for uh, shipping lines as well as uh, for Concord. So all these things part a, uh, uh, you know, they are part of this uh, agreement that we are having with shipping lines. I visited the headquarter of Musk, which is the second biggest shipping line in Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, they were quite excited when I told them about the green logistics, ESG norms being followed by our company and total business solutions. So uh, they have had internal discussions and uh, all of them are coming forward to sign these agreements with us, which are a comprehensive agreements. So ultimately, uh, we are going for uh, giving total service to our customers, and in the process, we will increase our uh, margins also. Right, right. So we should expect these value-added services to go up vis-a-vis -vis previous contracts to these new contracts that are getting. Yeah, that's right. We should uh, expect okay. more value-added services. Correct. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. I'll get back. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Aditya Mungia from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, um, I'll go ahead with my questions. First is actually more of a clarification. This 40 crore provision that you have um, kind of reversed and that link to Whitefield, does it have any impact in the manner? Uh, uh, that your incremental land license fees will be calculated? Um, uh, completely different and not to be linked up to future land license fee numbers? No, no, it will not be linked up to the future. This is a provision we made uh, uh, expecting that uh, this will be the LLF rate. Once uh, uh, we settle it with uh, Indian Railways, then uh, whatever provision, if it is extra, then that has to be written, written back. That is what we have done. So future, uh, I don't think it will have any impact. Understood. Uh, now, if I then assume this to be a one-off, um, it seems that your margins are uh, much lesser than 25% at an EBITDA level. Just wanted to understand when you kind of uh, gave this guidance uh, on the interview, uh, was this including other income that you were saying 25%? Or if it was not, if it was an EBITDA margin level and before other income, then how do you bridge the gap uh, from here on? Because today the margins are more like 23-ish or so, uh, if I take away this benefit. Uh, as far as our, uh, if you see the operating margin, operating margin is also quite high. The healthy operating margin, we, are, we have 33.65% operating margin in this first half of financial year. Real fixed margin was around 28%. And uh, one more thing is exceptional item. The Vasa which was that is 25 crores net of tax. So if we take all these things into consideration, I am quite confident that 25% EBITDA levels can be maintained by the company. Yeah, but this is including other income. Just clarifying when you give this number out or excluding other income. Of course, it includes other income also. Understood. Uh, so so that that clarifies. Uh, as in just moving on to the other questions. Uh, uh, wanted to get a sense from you that. Um, um, uh, this modal uh, share coefficient issue is impacting assets that already have a DFC there. So it is it is actually impacting somewhat JNPT, but a lot more uh, Mundra and Pipawa. Uh, should this be something that one should be worrying about? Will it reverse around? What are the drivers of it? Because DFC should be supportive, right, over here. Uh, 
we're just trying to get a sense of why why uh, why would this be happening and how to think for the future sir uh, i'm not able to understand your question can you please reframe it sure uh, typically in munzo and people are on the the model coefficient should have gone up over time because efc has been connected for some time while it is going down could you give us a sense of what is uh, happening leading to this situation okay so now the uh, the pawa is uh, port is mostly serving the hinterland near the pawa so uh, road becomes very competitive the rail is not competitive for uh, that uh, short distance movement for mundra also there is a lot of short distance movement and apart from that uh, there is a movement for uh, this uh, cfs is around mundra there are around, around 35 to 40 cfs is near mundra port where uh, many shipping lines prefer that they dispatch of their containers and take the cargo by road so uh, if they have urgency of uh, containers uh, near the ports so all these factors also affect the rail coefficients but of course our endeavor is that uh, maximum container should come to the hinterland for which we are creating so much assets we continue talking to the trade and convincing them and many times uh, it happens also that uh, they shift their pattern from cfs to the interland icds but lot of decision making is done by shipping lines uh, uh, understood uh, 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 just a couple of questions more from my side first for your other income uh, or your interest income if i see the cash flows uh, statement has meaningfully gone up from 1q to 2q um, could you give us a sense of what is driving this and um, uh, will this number again fall or be sustained at 2q levels i will request my ed finance uh, Mr. Harish Chandra, he will take this question, please. Ah, uh, Mr. Yes, you have rightly said the other income uh, we have the income from interest, the dividend which we get from our subsidiaries. So we kind of intend the rental income. So this varies uh, because you know the dividend received from the subsidiaries and joint ventures. It depends the receipt of the dividend. And then secondly, we have also received one refund from income tax department. There was also some interest element in that. so that is the reason that the increase in the other income is reflected in uh, last year it was 102 crores and this is 130 crores in this quarter so that's the reason mainly uh, the receipt of dividend as well as uh, interest on the refund and tax refund um understood maybe a last question from my side um, i think uh, uh, as in uh, we now better understand um, jnpt um, uh, because you are saying that you will um, do double stacking and give more collectability and pass on some sort of savings to the customer could you give us a sense of how much would be the customer uh, uh, better off now uh, uh, when he makes a decision on choosing uh, road and rail and what kind of savings would you be passing on to the customer once uh, uh, you have the varnama terminal ready you see uh, uh, actually i cannot disclose that uh, at the moment but i can give you some idea about it first thing is that when the container goes on upper deck railway charges 50% of uh, rail haulage so that will be one of the saving that we will be having for uh, 40 feet containers uh, carrying lightweight cargo so just to get a uh, just to give you an idea when from dadri to mundra port uh, we were running uh, double stack uh, when we started double stack trains we tweaked our tariff by 8 to 10% uh, for this lightweight cargo and we uh, had uh, extra uh, 12 to 15% traffic so maybe nawa sheva may be around that number only but right now the exact numbers uh, it is not possible to give it to you and is there any other terminal uh, 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 alongside varnama uh, which which may also come up from a competitor perspective let's say virangam for that matter is that a uh, uh, similar offering of double stacking that is happening till virangam and then uh, one goes to jnpt uh, or are you the only one benefiting or going to benefit from this virangam it actually is not uh, on that route virangam is a different uh, it will be taking off towards uh, it will be from amdavad towards mundra port so if you bring the train from north india to navasheva viramgam will not come in between viramgam will be different route from amdavad to mundra in between you will get viramgam so uh, as of now near varnama uh, there is no such terminal which has connectivity to dsc as well as indian railways 
Uh, got that. Um, thanks a lot for uh, squeezing in all my questions and the color providing. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Srinidhi Karnikar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so just one clarification. Uh, so did you say there was a busy season surcharge even during quarter two? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, so in that context, so what has driven the sequential improvement in the real freight margin? Because if I look at the real freight cost as a percentage of revenue, there has been a sharp sequential improvement. May I ask what has really driven this? This is due to the operational excellence of Team Concord. As I told you, there is a growth in double stacking. There is an 11.5% growth in double stack in the first half of this uh, financial year. This uh, first half, we have handled 3083 double stack trains as compared to 2766 double stack trains last year. So this has contributed in a big way for uh, reducing the empty running, which has affected the, positively affected the rail freight margin. And uh, secondly, the domestic also, we are getting lots of loaded uh, movement. Now, MT movement has come down. In domestic, if you see, there is a 1.5% reduction in MT running, which is a remarkable performance. As compared to 143 crores last financial year, we have, uh, uh, you know, incurred MT running cost of 140.8 crores. So there is a difference of a reduction of 1.5%. So all these factors have positively impacted the uh, rail freight margin, and it is improved by 80 basis points year on year. From 27.06%, it has gone to 27.85%. Right. There's a lot of the factors that drove this improvement uh, seems to be company specific. So do you think this very healthy rail freight margin uh, adjusted for the mixed changes you would be able to retain in the second half as well? Yeah, of course, we will be able to retain it and we, I think we will be able to improve upon it because uh, we are bringing JNPT also on double stack now, plus domestic we are seeing a very good traction. So all these things will positively contribute and uh, rail freight margin will further improve. Okay. It's the last one. I think uh, Director Domestic did highlight some changes like increases in domestic business prices. Uh, have you taken any price hikes in the exchange segment as well in recent months in some uh, some notes? No, exim uh, we have not undertaken any price hikes because uh, uh, railway has also not revised the prices and uh, domestic also we keep on changing. As, as such, we have not uh, done any, not, uh, not across the board increase. And uh, we keep on uh, revisiting because domestic is a dynamic uh, pricing kind of thing. Road, it is a direct competition with road. So we keep on revisiting wherever we have to bring it down, wherever we have to increase. So that is a continuous exercise by domestic division. Yes. And so last one, uh, how has been the first mile, last mile uh, penetration now and where do you think it's going up uh, by next year? We are uh, in this financial year, FY25, uh, we are targeting 50% of our business uh, that we are giving uh, should be on first mile, last mile. So at present on pan-India basis, around uh, 27 to 30% we are able to achieve in the first half of this financial year. And we, we are continuously, you know, working to improve it and achieve the target of 50%. And next financial year, we will set up a target of 80% uh, of our volume should be first mile, last mile, we will be able to give. So thank you for answering my questions. All the very best. And we are getting very good margin also on this stream. For uh, the first half of financial year, we have got 35% increase in first mile, last mile as far as revenue terms is concerned. Thank you for answering my question, sir. All the very best. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Amit Bhinde from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. I want to understand that there was an announcement uh, made uh, in September 
that uh, there would be some discounts provided on the storage charges etc to boost the exim trade so what would be the impact uh, cost impact uh, uh, for us on the exim margins or increase in cost in other words yeah now i want to clarify there is no uh, uh, concession on storage charges uh, it it was in media also uh, the thing is that uh, we are already giving uh, 90 days uh, free storage for empty containers for empty containers we are giving in exim i am talking in empty containers we are giving 90 days free storage at all our terminals and uh, for uh, loaded containers we are giving a free storage of 15 days so that is there for uh, last uh, i think one year we have uh, not changed it there is no reduction or there is no upward movement in that the thing that we revised was the empty handling charges at our terminal at dronagiri at dronagiri uh, empty handling charges were uh, in the range of 6000 for 20 feet and 9000 for uh, 40 feet so that we have uh, brought down and uh, reason was that at present uh, we we have very minuscule uh, empty inventory at our terminal at dronagiri so we are intending that uh, with this uh, reduction in uh, empty handling charges at dronagiri at only dronagiri we have brought it down so we will get lot of business a lot of empty containers will come so at present suppose we are having an earning of zero so at least we will get some earning so that keeping that perspective in mind we have revised the empty handling charges and uh, there have been inquiries from shipping lines and uh, very soon they will be storing their empty containers at our terminal so that will be like extra earning for the company it will not be a loss at all and uh, as far as empty storage time i again want to clarify it is still 90 days free time at all concord terminals this is this is there for last one year there is no reduction in that and how about the 50% reduction in the charge beyond 90 days was there already there or uh, now that would come i mean or beyond no, 90 days beyond 90 days there is a uniform tariff then there is no uh, reduction in charge right so i think the news suggested that there would be 50% reduction actually yeah that is in media what was uh, being uh, shown was not uh, in a correct perspective okay. so i put that it is good that you have asked this question so i hope it clarifies if anybody has any doubt they can ask more questions i am ready to clarify Uh, the second question that i have is uh, your guidance uh, as you were mentioning earlier or uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, now the trends would be such that handling and uh, uh, originating would be growing uh, to uh, in line itself and there wouldn't be disparity so the guidance holds on both but here we see that your domestic has grown at around 15% in handling and at around 22% in originating so now your guidance for full year are you giving it on the originating basis or handling basis handling Handling basis, okay. Sure. So those were my questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Kondanya from Jeffrey. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is a bit on the macro side. Can you help understand what is the thought process in extending this business season such such such? I mean, because we clearly see that file coefficient has been uh, falling off across the board. that up on the first one and the second one can you help us understand you know, what is driving this market share improvement for concord what are the key reasons if you can elaborate please thank you see uh, for the first question uh, i am not the best person to answer this question because this was done by ministry of railways but to be fair to them for the last 8 years they have not increased the rail haulage charges so 10% increase i don't think it was very much unjustified i should say Uh, but of course the quantum was very high that immediately it stopped the trade that was the that that is my reply on the first question as far as the second question is concerned this is the uh, increase in market share is due to the customer centricity policy that we have been following for the last one one and a half years plus the operational innovations operational excellence that has been done by my team operation team at concord these are the two point two reasons primary reasons for increase in market share with corresponding increase in margin there is no drop in margin also okay 
Wait, sir, sir, lastly, if you can also briefly touch base on you know, some of the initiatives because you spoke in one of the con calls that you are offering specific, uh, uh, you are giving specific offers to certain corporate groups. Can you provide some update on that? Or where is the um, what is current status? See, uh, what uh, we are a PSU, so we cannot have one-to-one -one, uh, offer that is valid for one customer. It will not be valid for another customer. What we do is we design our schemes and uh, based on the volume slabs. So uh, which, whichever customer uh, crosses that slab, they are eligible to avail of that scheme. We are not uh, designing scheme for a particular customer. We can't do that because we are a public sector company. So we have been doing it for so many years. Like volume discount schemes is, there. if you give more volume, you get more discount. If your in incremental volume is more, you get more discounts. So there are so many schemes like that, that we are doing it for exports, imports, throughout our ICDs, as well as domestic. Domestic, we have business affiliate policy. So if they give more business, they become platinum category. Then there's gold category, below, below that, silver category, bronze category. So it is all the uh, thing about whatever volume you are giving and what is the incremental volume as compared to last year. These are the two basic criteria that uh, gives uh, incentive to our customers. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. And wish your team a happy Diwali. Thank you very much. Same to you and your team. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, exam uh, volume growth of 3.5% was uh, pretty much in line with India's international trade growth. Uh, export growth of 1% and import growth of 6%. So for the second half, when we are expecting a strong double-digit growth, uh, what sort of uh, you know macro uh, uh, export-import growth numbers uh, you are thinking about for the country to grow at, which if they don't materialize, your guidance would be at risk? See, I can talk about only Concord country. You know, I think Honorable Commerce Minister will be the, you can ask this question to him. But uh, as far as my business is concerned, I have already highlighted the growth drivers and I am focusing on that. Uh, of course, it is all driven by the policies of Government of India. So we are hopeful to achieve our uh, target, whatever is, we uh, gave to us at the start of financial year. Sure. So I think the objective was to basically check if uh, uh, all India uh, export-import growth were in a similar range. Your uh, you know, growth drivers won't get impacted as much. You would still manage your double-digit growth because of Varnama and other, uh, you know, initiatives that you have outlined. Yeah, I think uh, that is what I meant also. Uh, uh, that's very clear. The second question, uh, uh, you know, is on the double-stacking numbers that you have given, 11.5% growth uh, and 3,083 rates being double-stacked. Uh, what percentage of your overall uh, rake movement on the DFC now is double stacked. Uh, the idea is to understand how much of the potential of double stacking has already been tapped when it comes to, say, Mundra, Pepa Wow. Uh, uh, I know GNPT would uh, still be pending, but uh, this question is more to understand what potential of double stacking has already been tapped by Concord. See, uh, if you see on DFC, uh, we are giving double stack benefit at Mundra and Tepawa. So I, I can say that uh, total volume that we are running on DFC, around uh, 70 to 75 percent is double stack. Okay. So pretty much this is uh, a fairly high level of double stacking which has already been achieved. Yes, that's right. Thank you so much. Those are my questions. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Akshay Ajmera from Nijar Securities. Please go ahead. I think this conference call is for one hour or more. Hello. So we'll take this as the last question. Sir. Okay. Yes, please. please go ahead. Yes. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, this question is regarding the new announcement uh, made by our uh, Commerce Minister and Mr. Pinch were uh, in September. And I think this question was already taken up by you, but a part of it I want to understand more from you. So on that uh, press conference, 
which was uh, basically to facilitate uh, you know increase uh, or ease of doing for the uh, exporters of our country so the intent was to reduce the tariffs and provide logistic solutions to them how do you see this going forward because the intent of the government is to uh, give and pass on benefits to the exporters so that they can uh, you know export more at the same time to reduce the logistic cost this has been recreated by the government and ministers of the government various times that their intention is to reduce the overall logistics cost in this country so how do you see this pressure coming to you uh, in terms of reducing cost passing on the cost benefit like you are talking about double stacking dfcc and all these things but uh, how how this will improve the margins because i, I think it can uh, it can give us some volume but at the same time whatever cost is you know there you have to pass on to the customer and in the same meeting they have also slashed uh, your empty container charges handling charges this is what we have read from the news article so if you can uh, you know clarify about how much impact uh, you had it and uh, what is what is your thinking on their intentions going forward thank you so much yeah so see now uh, actually as far as the empty storage charges as i clarified earlier they are 90 days free uh, at all our terminals for the last one year Uh, they were not done after this meeting and secondly uh, the handling charges we had reduced only at one terminal that is donagiri at all other terminals the handling charges remain the same we have not reduced it then so what could be the what could be the potential impact of that because uh, 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 percent of the volume is come from uh, donagiri if i am not wrong how much percent 33% of our volumes no 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 donagiri hardly contributes less than 1% of our volume Volume. Okay. Yeah, it is nothing actually. So at present the impact is zero. There is no impact at all, and because uh, we are yet to receive empty containers from uh, shipping lines at our Drona Giri terminal, which is near JNPT, so we have not uh, started getting the containers. So impact is zero. So we are expecting in the next uh, 10-15 days they will be using this facility. Then we will get some uh, revenue because imagine we were not getting any revenue. now at least you will get some revenue so it will be gain for the company it will not be a loss for the company media article but uh, media article uh, was giving some other impression so i wanted to clarify it now to all of you that it will be gain for the company that from zero revenue we are going to get some revenue apart from that uh, for the last one year we have started a scheme of 25% concession on empty container movement from gateway ports to hinterland icds this was done to promote the exports but we were offsetting this concession in terms of some charges that we had at terminals and we are continuing with those charges so there is no loss of uh, margin on that account and uh, because of the more uh, empty container movement at our terminals uh, because of these concessions we were getting exports additional exports so it will be additional it was additional income for the company that is that is quite evident in our uh, numbers also as i told you we have increased our market share but we have not sacrificed our margins margins have also increased and market share has also increased this is because of the uh, policy that company has been following we don't believe in sacrificing our margin to gain market share we believe in giving good service to our customers so that customer stays with us despite uh, there are some we may be expensive but our service that we give to customer is of international standards so uh, remember uh, we evacuate the containers from the ports immediately the dwell time is less than 30 hours whereas our competitors dwell time is 30 days so there is a huge uh, gap between service levels so customer is willing to pay more to get good service so that has been the philosophy of our company and that will remain for future also thank you very much due to time constraint that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to ms bhumika nair for closing comments thank you and over to you ma'am yeah um thank you everyone and uh, particularly the management for giving us an opportunity to host the call and uh, wishing you all the very best and a very happy diwali sir and to thank you very much bhumika and to you and your team 
on behalf of dam capital advisors limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line